Hello and welcome to the ANSYS innovation course on aerodynamics of an FSAE car. CFD simulation is a crucial tool for FSAE teams as it allows them to visualize the airflow around the car and optimize the design for improved aerodynamic characteristics. In most cases, the actual CAD model of the car is too detailed and contains many unnecessary elements from the standpoint of conducting an external aerodynamic analysis. Hence, it is almost always required to simplify and clean up the CAD model and make it CFD simulation ready. The focus of this video is to discuss the various considerations that are generally made for simplifying an existing geometry of an FSA car to create a CFD ready geometry. In this part 1 lesson, we will learn how to clean the complex FSA CAD by making various assumptions for the purpose of simplification using ANSYS discovery. Sounds interesting, right? Let's get started. Here, we have ANSYS discovery with an actual CAD model of an FSA car loaded. As you can see, this model has lots of detailed parts from tiny fasteners to the large wings. In CFD analysis, not all of these parts are needed. Having such unnecessary features, especially very small bodies and faces, leads to issues during mesh generation such as undesired mesh refinement leading to high cell count that does not contribute to better simulation accuracy. Moreover, Tiny gaps and sharp features also lead to the creation of mesh cells with poor cell quality. So, it is essential to simplify the model by removing such unnecessary components that do not affect the aerodynamic characteristics of the car. There are other parts such as small connectors, nuts and bolts, inserts, ribs, tabs, spars and chassis parts which are enclosed within the main body. That too are either too small to affect the flow or do not come in direct contact with the flow and hence will not be considered while creating the simplified CAD. Now, let's get started with the CAD simplification process. If you go to the aero assembly, the first component is the aero bodywork which is basically this surface body. The tab assembly consists of various tabs which are too small to affect the aerodynamics of the car so we will delete this complete assembly. Nose cone is a part of the car outer body which is a surface. It will be solidified later since in meshing we cannot have surface bodies. The next assembly is the chassis. It consists of various solids which resemble the rods. Majority of them are covered under the outer body of the car except for main hoop, main hoop bracing and bracing supports which are exposed to the incoming airflow. For this reason, we will keep these three chassis members and delete all others. Now, we again have chassis tab members, engine mounts, anti-intrusion plate, bulkhead inserts and bolt assembly. All these members are either too small or are covered under the body of the car and hence they also are not required. So, we will delete them too. The front wing assembly does not have any additional components but just solid wings so no change is required there. But on the side wings there are lot of parts like construction curves, ribs, tabs, inserts, spars and connector tubes in addition to the wings. Again most of these parts are tiny or inside the wing surface hence they will have no significant effect on the flow and can be safely deleted. Now let's move on to the rear wing. Here also, we will delete all the tiny parts like ribs, spars, etc. and have just clean wings along with the swan necks or mounting brackets. The aero mounts or mounting brackets are the structural members which connect the front and rear wings to the chassis. These aero mounts may or may not be included in the CAD at the discretion of the team. Excluding them allows more flexibility and even lets you automate the workflow 
for varying the wing's angle of attack, conduct positioning and sizing studies without having to manually edit the geometry. Whereas, including aero mounts allows the simulation to account for flow obstruction they cause, resulting in a disturbed flow over the wings. In our case, we have included the mounting brackets on rear wing only. For this demo, we are not using mounting brackets for front wing and hence we will delete this front wing swan neck or mounting brackets too. In the diffuser assembly also, we will delete the tab component and any construction curves. Let's look at the engine part now. The engine, intake, exhaust and radiator assembly have lots of complex tiny parts. Keeping all of them would result in high mesh cells, in meshing and probably over refined mesh which is not desirable. Since most of the parts in this region are present in the wake of the driver and it's not in the direct line of exposure to the incoming air, we can replace them with simpler shapes of approximately the same size as the engine, intake and radiator assembly. Also, in exhaust assembly, only these components are exposed to an external flow, so we will keep them and delete all the construction curves and other exhaust components. These are the simplified blocks for engines and the cleaned intake assembly. Now, this exhaust pipe is very thin, hollow solid body, which can cause difficulties during meshing. Since making this completely solid by filling it would not change its geometry with respect to aerodynamics, we will fill it by selecting all its internal faces and then clicking F on keyboard for fill command as shown. Now, the engine, intake, radiator and exhaust are ready. If we look closely at the CAD, there are still some small parts present. These are majorly the parts from the suspension assembly. So, let's get rid of them too. Ball bearings and housing components are very small components, so including them would just increase the complexity of the CAD. So, let's delete them. Now, we see these components which are also not required as they are inside the car body, so we will delete them too. These connecting rods have significant surface area in contact with the flow, so we will keep them. Now let's look at the brake assembly. Here, this component is near the rotating wheel which has wheel rims too. Due to this, the flow here is so chaotic that the exact shape of the brake structure is not a factor in deciding the airflow in this region. So, to avoid issues during meshing due to the presence of the complex brake parts, an approximate shape is a viable alternative. Hence, we will delete the complex brake assembly and replace them with a simpler solid shape as shown. Also, these housings placed at the end of the connecting rods are not required. Instead, we will just pull the end face of the connecting rods up to the car body like this. These connecting rods are hollow thin structures which need to be filled to avoid meshing related issues. So to fill them, we can select the internal faces by holding control and scrolling using scroll wheel of the mouse to reach internal face and then clicking on the internal face. Once the internal face has been selected, press F on keyboard or select fill from the design tab to use the fill command to make them filled solid bodies. Since the brake assembly and connecting rods are symmetrical about the YZ plane, we can just modify them on one side and then mirror them using the mirror command as follows. Here are the simplified brakes and the connecting rod assembly. Now let's have a look at the wheels. The wheels that we have here have hollow tires and solid filled rims. Also there are a lot of sharp corners which are not desired in the meshing. So we will simplify them by filling hollow surfaces and removing all the visible sharp corners. We only have to work on one wheel and using the mirror or move option, we can create the other three. 
Here is the simplified wheel. The contact region between the wheel and the ground results in sharp shaped regions. These would lead to bad cells in those regions and hence to avoid this, we will create contact patches at the bottom of the wheels. To create a contact patch, create a bottom plane very close to the wheel and sketch a patch shape there which is very close to the tire sides and use pull tool to pull the newly created surface up to the wheel. Once created on one of the wheels, you can use the mirror and move commands to duplicate the patch and add it to the other wheels. This is how the final wheel geometry looks like. All the major tasks have been completed and only a few minor modifications are remaining. Let's begin with the car body. Here, to make this surface solid, we can pull it and type 1 to give it a finite thickness making it a solid body. Later, by making use of fill and pull tool, we can completely fill it leaving the empty space in front of the driver. To save time, we have already created the solid and here is how it looks like. Here, the shoulder of the driver and leg cavity needs a little modification. To give proper shape to the shoulders, let's use pull tool and select this edge. Now we will enter a value that should give sufficient curves to the shoulder. Now it looks much better. For the driver profile, the geometry has been simplified below the chest, that is, the leg portion of the driver is not considered since its impact on the external aerodynamics of the vehicle is low. So, we will just create slant cavity for that. Here is the modified cavity region. On the rear wing, few holes are visible, so we will fill them using the fill tool. Similarly, there are faces in these rear wing mounting brackets which needs simplification. We will remove the gaps between these faces and using the pull up to tool, we will fill this gap. Once done, we can delete the other swan neck and mirror the simplified one. While cleaning the CAD, we should try to simplify or eliminate the small faces. If left unchecked, they may lead to cells with bad quality during meshing. In our CAD, we have flaps on the trailing edge of the top element of the front wing. Their thickness is around 0.4 mm. These are aerodynamic devices which are important. But considering the scope of this demo course, resolving them would lead to a very high cell count with little improvement in accuracy. Hence, we will remove them. To do so, simply click on these two faces and press F on keyboard for the fill command. We will now fill any hollow parts and combine the relevant parts together. For example, front wing has two parts. We can select both the parts as displayed and make them as a single solid by using the combine tool. Based on all the considerations discussed till now and after removing, modifying and grouping all the required parts and after rearranging the tree, we have arrived at the simplified FSA geometry as shown here. Here, we have the solid vehicle body including the chassis, the driver profile with the headrest, the front wing, the rear wing assembly along with the mounting brackets, the side wings, the inlet and the exhaust components, the diffuser, simplified blocks for the engine and radiator assemblies, the suspension parts, and the front and rear wheels with wheel contact patches. Let's summarize what we have learned in this lesson. We started the lesson with the complex CAD geometry having detailed parts and based on realistic and practical assumptions for performing an external aerodynamic analysis of the geometry. 
we performed modifications to arrive at a simplified geometry that can be used for CFD analysis. In the process of performing the modifications, we learned how to use the different tools in ANSYS discovery such as fill, combine, move, mirror, etc. In the next lesson, we will learn how to check the geometry for errors and further learn how to fix them. With that, let's wrap up the lesson.